parent to do our weekly show that we're doing for families to help you get through this COVID-19 crisis. Uh, my name is Dr. Syra and I'm here with my colleague Laura Trelizzi. Both of us are registered counselors and today's topic is a little bit different than what we've been doing the past few weeks. What we're looking at today it's about going inward and specifically going inward so that we can move forward through what we're going through as families in this crisis. So Laura is outside yeah. today in her backyard. Tell us a little bit about where you are and why it's an important spot for you. Oh, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, thank you. I am blessed with, with uh, this beautiful um, corner. It's my serenity garden. It's what my family has blessed me with. And I grew up on the West Coast, grew up in Deep Cove. North Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to having the mountains at my back and the ocean at my front, and surrounded by nature. And I find it, I'm best grounded when I'm in this. And when I'm trying to get grounded and get, get uh, you know, have an inter, introspective, what's the word I'm looking introspective. for? Introspective. Introspective. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> I'm in my Zen moment, so I can't find the proper words. Yes, when I'm, I'm, I find nature really helps me. Yeah. So Laura and I, before we started recording, you know, you know how we do it, right? We just chat for a minute and then we record <laughs> and we see what comes up. And what we were talking about today is this fine balance between seeing the gifts and the value and the spiritual growth opportunity in this crisis also balanced with an acknowledgement that it's hard like it's not it's not an easy situation we're in it's a very different situation and yet there are these really sweet moments and opportunities as well so we thought we'd talk a little bit about that in our own lives and also in the lives of the clients and the people that we've been working with to see if that might be helpful for you today yeah, yeah. so outside so when you talk about you know your your place laura where you can feel really introspective and in yourself um i have two like that so one is outside um hopefully by like a creek or a brook some sort of moving water um, i grew up in alberta and so when we needed to get away we'd go into the mountains and so there you know that kind of covered wooded area with a little creek that's that's my spot that i like yeah um yeah also because I grew up in Alberta, um, there was snow. And so it wasn't always possible to get outside. And so the other place that I feel really, really at home is in my library space. So every house I've lived in, I've developed a little library corner, whether it's an entire room or just a little section of a room. And so I have my little library space in this home and that's the place where you know, I have a little chair there and my books and they can just curl up with a blanket and just feel really peaceful in that place. So those are, I have these two kind of different ways that I, I go inside. We could swap homes anytime then. Any, after COVID. <laughs> we have the both thing. My inside is the same thing. I have, as you guys know, all the books behind me usually. So what's the value, do you think, for people watching in finding these kind of little, you know, serenity spaces or little sacred getaways within their own homes? What, what's the value in that, do you think? Yeah, just, just like what we were saying, Syra, just to get grounded, you know, just to get out of the whole hurricane fast life is so fast and so it was fast. even faster so before lost. like wasn't it even faster before now it's actually mm -hmm. well not for everyone some people who are essential workers it's probably much more intense um mm -hmm. for those who probably have time to watch these videos <laughs> it's likely quieter um i was reading something this morning about the kind of culture that at least in you know in north america canada and the united states the kind of culture that we've developed is a culture really of consumption, right? It's of, of material consumption. It's about collecting yeah. things and collecting mm -hmm. even experience. It's like collecting. And we can see that through, you know, how we post on social media. And it's like, oh, look what I'm doing. And I'm collecting this. Yeah. And look at my. And what we've forgotten is about actually experiencing what we're going through rather than collecting and curating and 
you know, posturing, yeah. we've forgotten to be in it. And I think that's what finding spaces in our own home where we can just be with ourselves, where it's not about, you know, oh, let's take a selfie of me meditating. Because that's, the yoga mat is not where we get our enlightenment. Well, maybe for some people, but for most of us, it's in the depths of the fight and the depths of the pain and the depths of the conflict that we respond mm-hmm. in a different way and say, oh, I responded in a different way there than I used to. And that's where the growth happens, I think, rather than just in those like structured moments where you say, this is my spiritual retreat moment. Does that make sense? That's beautiful, beautiful, Syra, And so important because it is in welcoming what we are truly experiencing right is when we are actually able to truly grow Mm -hmm. and then truly heal and i think there's also in our culture like while we've had that kind of consumption materialistic culture there's also been i was talking to this woman the other day about this um this kind of commodification of personal growth so it's like balance mm-hmm. and zen and mindfulness and mm-hmm. you know you're, there's this idea that you can s- somehow if you do all the right things or read all the right mm-hmm. books or engage in the right activities you'll have this inner peace and this you know spiritual bliss and I don't know if it's that easy to just like you know follow five steps to five steps to zen during COVID-19 I don't, I don't think it's <laughs> I've seen like posts like that right where people are yeah. oh just do this and you'll feel better Although the, 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 the intent is good. Yeah. The intent, the intent is, but um, there's a superficial layer to, to it in the way that you're describing it, Saira. Um, it, 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 as long as, like everything, it's our perspective. Mm-hmm. Everything in life comes down to our perspective. So if we're going into this, just, well, I'll do this and this will help me get with the program and then mm-hmm. <laughs> but your mind has to truly be in the right and it, and it takes it takes practice it takes training in order to know how to do that exactly i think so that word is your... sorry that word training is really important because we've, yeah. we've been trained a particular way throughout our childhood right to respond to That's our correct. stressors yeah. and so now for many people it's an opportunity to retrain ourselves to how to respond to these these things that are stressful. Sorry, I interrupted you. Were in the middle of no, something. no, that that's fine. That's what we do, <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's good, you know. And, and uh, just like um, if you are whatever type of spirituality you practice, and that doesn't every that's different for everybody, but needing to be recognized in all, and but. <laughs> Just, just that uh, wherever you go, it doesn't matter. I am blessed with this beautiful green space, but whether I'm here or whether I'm in traffic, well, that, that we don't have to worry about that right now, but <laughs> if we're going home, you know, if I, let, let's say we're in rush hour traffic as we normally uh, are used to, mm-hmm. and you see one per- person getting all with road rage and ah, mm-hmm. like this, right? Where you look at the car next to that person and that person's just fine. They're singing to their music or whatever they're doing. Right. They're in the exact same location they are in the exact same situation but they are perceiving it differently they are experiencing it differently Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's and that siren is what you were talking about before how were we what is our environment because although the um it's you know it's our mind how does our our mind you know they say well just think happy be happy think positive be positive right but it's also our environment that creates our mind so right down to when our mothers were carrying us Mm -hmm. if if our mom was stressed we're getting those stress hormones as our brain is developing right and then that that lays the track for how we're going to cope for the rest of our lives right and until we make an effort to change that it doesn't it doesn't change Right. Right. Um, There was something else that I wanted to bring up around this whole thing. Now I can't remember. Oh, Oh, you're having a a Laura moment. I'm having a Laura moment. (laughs) (laughs) No, it came, it came. Um, So 
for me right now, this is a really special time. So I belong to a particular community and these days, it's a special month for us right now, the month of Ramadan. And um, mm -hmm. for us, this month is all about that introspection and that going inside and that kind of clearing out those habits that we might have collected over the last year on, you know, that rough kind of response to life. And one of the things that's come up a lot with people in my community, in my faith community, is that that longing to go to those places of worship, right? So for those of us who maybe belong to a spiritual community where you actually gather together, this is could be a I mean, it's, it's wearing on us, right? It's been weeks and weeks that we haven't been able to yeah. gather. And so one of my mm -hmm. teachers was talking about, you know, how can you bring that place of worship inside of you rather than having to go somewhere to praise the divine or to celebrate with your mm -hmm. you know your brothers and sisters in spirituality is there a way of bringing that inward and kind of recreating it and and maybe even within the home so one of the things that we started doing in our family is we're we're kind of sitting down regularly for reflection and prayer as a family um, which is something i mean we could have done before but we were just always really busy and so now it's like something that just for the last few days it hasn't been forever but just since we've been feeling that real longing to reconnect to our yeah. place of worship we've been dread just trying to build a little one in our own home and then kind of by extension once a week we'll reach out with our extended family over zoom and we'll do kind of a, a community of family prayer together so mm -hmm. i think there's ways of staying in touch with that divine presence even though the ways that we're doing it are going to be different now than they were you know yeah. a few months ago excuse me yeah exactly syra and as we said before um even if you're not somebody who uh looks for that presence, uh, whether spiritually or religiously, you're still wanting that physical touch of other human beings and that right. connection. That gathering, right? So, the connection. Right. Yeah. 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 And that brings your own, you know, the same, the, whatever the motivation, whatever the, you know, the con we're still wanting to be connected. There's, and there's a really together simple little thing I saw I was watching this webinar on supporting um, people who are who are like our elders who are in nursing homes who are separated from us mm -hmm. physically and we can't visit them I was watching this doc this uh, webinar somebody was talking about it and one mm -hmm. of the things that they said that I thought was such a sweet little tip was um, to give a hug like this so I want to give Laura a hug and I can't oh. so then I just <laughs> I just hug you like this and we kind of hug each other like that. And it's just that reminder that, you yeah. know, if we could be in the same place, um, we wouldn't. And the other day somebody was talking about somebody passed away and there was this impulse to, to go and touch mm -hmm. them. Right. But cause that's what we do. We come closer mm -hmm. to each other when we're helping people mm -hmm. through pain and we physically can't. And so it's mm -hmm. like a little virtual way of, of letting the people know mm -hmm. that. I mean, we have well, the emoji, right? The hug emoji. Do you know that one? Yeah, that, well, there's the happy one, and then there's the the more um, that that one. But uh, I like that idea, Syra, because we are still, even though we're hugging ourselves, we're sending a message. But just that physical, we are touching ourselves, and it's really important to get in touch with our body. Mm -hmm. You know what we're experiencing in our body. And Syra, you just reminded me. I don't know if you can see a picture on the screen. Probably not, but. Uh, so yesterday, my father is in one of those homes mm -hmm. in North Van, and yesterday was his 84th birthday. <gasps> and so, so I have the photos of, you know, my son and I haven't been out in two months, mm -hmm. with the exception of two outings, both of which were to see my dad through the class. Mm -hmm. And the other time, he didn't. He, it, it was we it was more of a connection for us than for him mm -hmm. uh, but yesterday he was actually alert he's trying to tell us come inside he's confused he didn't mm -hmm. know why we were, were coming in but so yesterday we were more prepared and we brought pieces of paper that we could write on nice and so i have the photo of my son holding the piece of paper happy birthday we love you we miss you against the glass and mm -hmm. you can see the picture of my dad on the other side and he had a little, the care aide wrote a little note on a piece of paper, said, thank you for visiting us oh. or visiting me. And, and so my dad had a little tear and it, it was nice. So, yeah. 
and, and we did that we did exactly that Sarah we did the heart <sighs> and, yeah and you know blew the kiss so I think you know we're getting to our time for today and we've talked about kind of a, a different area than we've been we've been covering over the last few sessions the last few sessions we've been talking about kind of really practical things to do to get through and I think today it's more about going within yourself to find some of those mm -hmm. answers for yourself and your own families um you know we're still in it we're in the middle we're we're not you know in one of my other videos I was talking about at the beginning we were like okay what do we need to do and let's get all the rules and let's yeah. get our toilet paper and let's get all set up and and now we're in the middle and it's like it keeps going and going and going and we don't know how long and so that can be really it can be hard for people to be in that middle space I think um Syra, and also because we're also in the middle of where people are starting to fear is this I'm getting a lot of a lot of um, calls where the depression is setting in, the anxiety is setting in, the fear is setting yeah. in, and this is not a new norm that I can live with, and panic is setting in. Right. Yeah. So I think that we want to uh, do this again about perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's Absolutely. just how how do we use this time in order to keep going forward and even if yeah. it just means once a day at one point in the day you just take a moment and breathe and check in on the inside mm -hmm. with yourself just just once a day um mm -hmm. i've i've been finding it useful to do that at a regular time every day so you know as soon as i wake up in the morning um other mm -hmm. people like to do it right before they go to bed but just a check-in like how am i doing today deeper than just my mood right because the mood is moods mm -hmm. come and go like up and down mm -hmm. but it's like as like as a being as a spirit as a as a whole entity how am i doing how's my family doing i think that question is worth asking at this point in the journey that we're on speaking of questions syra and i'll try to make this one quick but speaking of questions also when you uh, be curious we've we've touched on this many times but how you look at things because if you look at a situation and you say uh Oh, I'm so stupid. Why would I do something like that? Why did I say something like that? Yeah. And, you know, we talked, talked about this on the last video of, with your, um, the situation where the tension in the kitchen <laughs> grew and the tension with your daughter grew, and everything else. And so you can ask that same question. But if you ask it in an accusatory manner to somebody else, why would you do something like that? Or to yourself? I'm so dumb. Why would I do something like that? You can use those same words and say, why did I do that? What was mm -hmm. going on for me? Right. Because if you, if you do it in an accusatory manner, defense mode right away, and then we're, we're stuck in that. So again, to get out of the defense modes and get into the social engagement modes and ask, why? What's happening? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's a posture of curiosity more than a posture of attack, right? In the very exactly. question. Yeah. Exactly. So we could go on, you know, me and Laura, we can talk and talk, but we'll leave it there for today. Um, we are helping out with free check-in calls. If you do need some of that one-to-one -one support, we're also mm -hmm. taking on new clients online. So if you're interested in that, you can check out dragonflywellnesscenter.ca. Um, we'll be here once a week throughout this crisis. If there's particular topics you want us to address, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And also let us know in the comments, what was the most useful part of this video for you? What really um, struck a chord with you? Or do you have any particular particular questions that came out of today's today's little chat so we'll see you next week can, oh, Sarah, wait, can, I, can I can I can I do what I always do uh, also at, at the end I'm very sorry it just occurred to me I'm just wondering if it's possible when you're talking about comments mm -hmm. I'm thinking that if we looked back on this time because it's like we've talked about how we process what's going on in our environment is what's going to create. Now, are we going to become depressed? Are we going to have post-traumatic stress? Are we going to have anxiety or alcoholism? Whatever that is. Right. But if we can back it up and look at this from a different perspective, that might, you know, preventative. That mm. might help us to help us to come out on the other side in a healthy way. 
So maybe people the can leave those, those comments below. How would you reframe this time? How would you see it in a different way so that we can all kind of help each other as we, as we go along? And if you don't want to share it, just share it with yourself. Thank but we'd you. love to read it. Yeah. Or yeah, and you can also send us a note um, through our website as well if you want to get in touch yeah. with us directly and you don't want to put it in a public space, that's allowed to you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week for What's a Parent to Do. Take care. Be well.